Welcome back to my channel. This is Canadian Retro. I have a video response that I put together here for Pat the NES Punk and Ian's um, podcast that they made for the stigma against buying on eBay a uh, video game collection, essentially. And the thing that they were talking about was primarily um, the stigma around, you know, getting an instant collection um, and how that sort of affects other things and also causes problems with the raising of prices and things like that as well. So I'll get into that, um, my thoughts on that, because I, my perspective is a little bit different, and I don't think it's entirely different, but it's a little bit different than really what they were mentioning, because for the most part, it made it sound like, um, you know, people that were amassing video games very quickly weren't knowledgeable about games or uh, this kind of thing, like didn't have didn't have really an interest in it, would lose interest and ditch their uh, collection immediately kind of thing or within a couple of years. Now that being said, I've only been collecting for you know maybe a year and a half for the NES, so who knows what the future will bring. Maybe uh, their predictions will come true as far as I'm concerned, but uh, I don't think it's going to. I'm planning on holding on to this stuff uh, forever, basically. So this is um, the way that it worked for me. I did get an NES system. Uh, back in the day from a thrift shop right when I started uh, going out video game hunting and it was something that I was looking for obviously it was absolutely essential that I get an NES I was looking online and things like that and none of the prices were suiting me so I you know I kind of worked it that way um, the way that it worked on eBay is I probably bought about three different lots one was a really big lot one was a medium sized lot and one was a very small lot so that's really how I amassed my first um, games, minus the ones that came with the original system that I found at a thrift shop. And the reason for doing this is not to amass a ton of games. It wasn't really the point of it. It was the cheapest option uh, for doing that because what I was doing was I was systematically going through different lots and finding those video games that I had in my youth, um, ones that I knew had some value as well as um, value to me as far as you know, nostalgia purposes or games that I wanted to play again, things that I absolutely made sure that I had to have back in my collection, my must-haves, um, were all in those lots and that's essentially how I started doing that. Now that being said, I'm not even close to done um, collecting for NES. I have a ton of games and they're the harder to find games, they're a little more expensive games and things like that um, that I'm going to be on the lookout for and I'm hoping to run into them. But as of yet, I haven't found those things in the thrift shops, nor would I have found um, much of the things that are in my collection as it stands. So what I'm going to do here is I'll actually show you my collection and um, not for the sake of like showing off or anything like that, just to give you a general idea of what I've got in there. I'm not going to go through it title by title, but just to give you like an overall overview of the number. All right, I apologize for the lighting here. There's not much I can do about that. Um, try to have a light here on it, but it's just sort of very reflective and things. Uh, maybe that speaks to the, the shininess of my cartridges, though. Uh, for the most part, they're in pretty good shape. Um, but most of these did come from eBay, although I did pick up some from you know different shows and things like that. Uh, pretty decent collection, pretty solid titles in there. Like you've got you know Micro Machines. There's like Mega Man games. Like there's Mega Man Three. Uh, Mega Man 4, that came from a show, though those two actually came from a show, it wasn't from eBay. But, uh, you know, like Ninja Gaiden 2, Boyna's Blob, like, uh, these these ones also came uh, actually from thrift shopping. So maybe I'm underestimating, you know, what I got in my lots here, but... Uh, like, all these games down here are ones that, generally speaking, I'm not so interested in. There's, like, Home Alone and this kind of thing now. That doesn't mean I'm not totally interested in them, but these all... Generally speaking, they came in some of the lots that I bought, not the more desirable titles, but some of the ones that I did want to get, you know, are up here. For instance, one I didn't pay attention to in the past, didn't really know about, was River City Ransom, and I went after this game uh, when I started collecting, just because of the things I saw and all that kind of stuff, and actually it's part of my introduction, I just love that game so much. Um, but that's sort of something that I've found later on, but like things like RC Pro-Am, not an expensive game by any stretch of the imagination, but still uh, something I wanted to get because that's something I had when I was a kid. Same thing with Super Mario 2. Um, I've come across, this is probably one of the more common titles I actually come across. I came across this more than um, Mario 3 or 
the original um, Duck Hunt version of Mario and things like that as far as in thrift shops. I think I've come across this about four or five times in the last year and a half, whereas, uh, you know, Mario 3 or Duck Hunt, I think I've come across like maybe four, but this one here, like four or five at least. Um, that being said, like games like Metroid, I didn't have that Dr. Mario, like this is the, this one's not expensive, obviously. This one here um, is an expensive, not a totally expensive game, it's not like rare or anything ridiculous like that, but some, definitely a must have, and something I wasn't going to find locally, and I wasn't going to find it for a good price locally, that's for sure. Uh, things like Base Wars, this was something I had when I was a kid, had to get this game. I only found it in a lot, that's the way that it went. Same with uh, Mario 3, I found that in a lot and so on like there's a variety of different ones in there uh, there's a few here that don't have labels on them like for instance this guy right here i believe is tyson's punch out yeah it's missing its label i can tell i can see this part here you probably can't see that but that's like tyson's punch out it wasn't in the greatest shape but it did come in a lot same with the uh, legend of zelda i mean that came in a lot so on like i had i had to get these things that i wanted to get from my collection um that's a must have obviously so when I saw it, it in a lot with things like Battle Toads and other things like that, I just had to uh, get my hands on it. Now, some of my finds I did get locally. For instance, one of the more valuable games that I have here is uh, this Tension Tetris game. I did find this is actually in the first few months of thrift shopping. I found that in a value village, which was really awesome. But uh, that's sort of a general overview. I do have um, up on the shelf over there some box games as well, which uh, most of those, um, some of those actually my wife had in her youth and kept the boxes, luck luckily for me. And uh, some of them I did like local trades for the most part. And a couple of them for shows, from shows, and I think maybe a couple came from eBay. But uh, for the most part, I'd say a lot of this here and all of this down here definitely came uh, from those eBay lots. All right, that was part of my collection now. I do have some box games. I didn't bother to show those ones. Um, most of those I got locally, so they don't really qualify for the whole eBay kind of aspect of this, you know, um, argument or not argument, but discussion that these guys are having. So my thoughts on this kind of work this way. Collect any way possible, honestly. Uh, if you want to shop on eBay, you want to you know, do things locally, you want to go to flea markets, you want to go to thrift shops, you want to go garage selling, you want to talk to your friends, you want to, you know, go um, wandering down the streets handing out cards, you want to uh, phone up random people and ask them if they got video, whatever, man, just go go find games, like, that's the way that it goes. Um, I didn't outrageously price those, or pay outrageous prices for those games that I do have in my collection. I probably paid about $3 each, which I think, you know, if I had of um, gone to, you know, thrift shops and stuff like that, I'd probably be paying that price generally speaking. Sometimes I can get NES games for like $250 um, at a thrift shop if it's like half price day, but the likelihood of that happening with the competition in the city that I'm in, there's really no chance of finding NES stuff. If you do, you're very lucky. Uh, most of the stuff that I'm finding is literally coming off the rack, and it's total luck and it's total persistence um, that ends up getting me those things because um, I literally like try to look in the back and see if there's a cart coming out and if I see stuff on it that I want I'll sit there and wait for it and things like that like honestly I put a lot of time and effort um, into finding those things and, and the NES stuff is like really rare as far as showing up you know in the thrift shops these days but that's my point though is like collect any any means you can if you you know you find a good deal on eBay go for it um, if you're going for those like crazy buy it now prices like they were commenting on in the podcast, you know, you are doing a major disservice to the collecting community. You are basically telling those sellers they can charge anything they want for these games and we're willing to pay for it. I never did things like that. Um, mine were always auctions and I always, you know, bid up to where I felt comfortable and I let a whole bunch of auctions go where I was like, I'm not comfortable with this price. I don't think this is a good price. I'm not paying more than $3 or $4 for games, um, individually, obviously, uh, but in the gigantic lot. So that's really my thing with that is, you know, collect any way that you possibly can. My second part to that is you got to start somewhere, and that's really where I started. I was going, these are the games that I want. I know about these games, and one of the things was that they were saying in the podcast is sometimes people are getting instant collections, and they don't know a thing about most of the games in their collection. Um, 
that does not that does not apply to me, I don't think. I know a lot about the video games that I have. I don't know everything about every single one of them. I'm not like a historian as far as NES games go. Like knowing, you know, name me a title and I can give you like who published it and what year and all that kind of like I'm I'm not an encyclopedia. You know, go to Wikipedia and find out that information if that really, you know, is part of your pursuit or whatever. You can go right ahead and do that. It's much easier, I think, than trying to memorize or think you're knowledgeable about stuff or whatever. I, I'm not that, you know, knowledgeable as far as that goes. But I have played all these games because when they do come in my front door and I get them into the house, it's the first thing I do. I don't care if um, they're, you know, coming from my best friend, my worst enemy, off of eBay, somewhere locally, a thrift shop. I don't care where it's coming from. If it's coming into my collection, it's being cleaned, and even the cleanest cartridges that I've seen come in through, you know, my front door kind of thing, I've cleaned them up and I do get junk off of them. Nonetheless, I get stuff off of the contacts, I get stuff off the cartridge itself. I don't want that stuff going into the equipment I'm using, so it gets absolutely spotlessly cleaned um, to the best of the, the ability that I can do that. Like in other words, you know, things are stained or whatever. I can't do a thing about that, but. You know, if, as far as like dirt and filth and all that kind of stuff, I clean it. And when I clean it, I test it because it's not going to my collection if it doesn't work. So I do spend like, you know, a few moments at least playing all of those games, checking them out. Um, if a game interests me, I end up uh, kind of canning my cleaning session for that night and I continue playing it for a little bit. But uh, most of those games I put at least like 10, 20 minutes into for the most part. Uh, some of them I'm like not really interested in them necessarily. Um, I know about them. I've watched videos on YouTube about them. Whenever I was buying one of these lots, I also uh, did my research on each individual game that was in it. If I hadn't heard of it before, I hadn't seen it before, I hadn't played it before, I went online and I looked up like the gameplay of it and all that kind of stuff. Um, those, those games weren't really deciding factors for me because I was targeting the ones that I really wanted um, from those lots, but again, like I was saying, uh, my knowledge base obviously increased by doing that. But you gotta start somewhere basically. If you wanna get collecting, you gotta basically use all the avenues of, you know, getting games and stuff like that. And that was one that was really open to me because of the climate I'm collecting in. And it's very hard um, around here to get good NES scores, I feel. Um, garage sales are sold out immediately, thrift stores are hit up constantly. It's just, it's really difficult. So, you know, if you want to collect, you've got to be more savvy. You've got to leave your options open. To shut down the avenue of using eBay is a ridiculous idea. Like, it's there for you to use. Get in there, use it. Don't go like crazy on the buy it now kind of stuff. You are driving up prices if you do that. But if you're participating in the auction aspects of things, you've got your, you know, your price limit. You're not going ridiculous on it. You're not uh, Joe Rich or whatever that can spend a billion bucks on an NES collection kind of thing. Then you know, you're you're treating it right. Now, other people that got the money to blow, they don't care if they're blowing 20 grand on it. That's their own business. They can spend their money any way they want to. Um, I think that, you know, as far as like the comments though on getting your collection, like Insta collection kind of thing, I don't think mine's an Insta collection. There's a lot more to be added to it, but um, it really depends on your knowledge base. Like I have that history with the NES, so I really know like a lot about the system I was around when it came out just like these other guys like I I played with it my friends had it we traded games we talked about games we looked at magazines that had video games in it all that kind of good stuff um, that was the schoolyard talk that was everything so our knowledge bases you know are from that and as far as you know getting those things very quickly uh, the way that I got those 150 games, even though they're not all from eBay, that I got them relatively quickly, within a year and a half. That doesn't mean that, you know, I'm less knowledgeable or something like that about these things. It's just I didn't start collecting them until, you know, that recently. Now, I don't know if I've touched on everything here. It's kind of getting late, so I'm going to have to cut myself a little bit short. But those are some of my ideas uh, surrounding this particular topic. Thanks again for watching. Um, I'm not going to promote myself here. I usually say things like, you know, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do and all that. Um, even though I just said it, which is kind of ridiculous. But I'm not going to promote myself here because that's not really the point of it. Uh, the point of it is, um, you know, to engage in this part of the conversation and to show different aspects of the things that they were talking about in their podcast. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all later.